Education channel. My name is Charity Pepizani. Our topic for today is have faith. Have faith in the Lord. So um, as we will continue with this topic, I do have a couple of verses that I want us to read from the Bible, mainly from Hebrews, Genesis, and the book of Daniel as well. But before we do that, like we always do, let's pray together, brothers and sisters. Um, just thank the Lord for today. Father, we want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for seeing us through, for helping us, holding us, protecting us. Thank you, God, that we're here. We're able to worship you. We're able to pray to you. And we're able, Lord, to share this good news of the gospel to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So have faith. When I think about that topic, the first person that comes to my mind is Abraham, because we know that the Bible says Abraham was the father of faith, the father of our faith. And looking at his life story, looking at everything that he's gone through, you can just be amazed and say, wow, what a man of faith. What a man of faith. So I do have a couple of verses that I want to read for you today. The first one we're going to read is from Hebrews. Actually, maybe we should go to Genesis first. We'll read from Genesis and see the promises that the Lord had uh, given to Abraham. And then we'll probably finish with the ones in Hebrew. So let's go to Genesis um, 15. So this is Genesis 15. The Lord had given um, Abraham so many promises. At one, at one time, you know, him and his wife, Sarah, were very old. They couldn't conceive. And um, the angels of the Lord visited them. And as they were speaking to Abraham, and, you know, one angel said to Abraham that you're going to have a son. And Sarah was listening, and she laughed. And it's funny because the Bible says God asked, like, Sarah, did you laugh? And then she lied and said, no, I didn't laugh. I think in her laughter, she was just amazed and wondering how is this going to happen? What manner of faith do you need for you to know that I'm an old woman or my, my body is not functioning the way that it's supposed to be? And you're telling me that I'm going to have a child. Mm. Even me, I would laugh. I'm sure you would laugh as well because it's something that seems impossible to men. But remember, the Bible says whatever is impossible with us, it is possible with God because all things are possible with God, right? It's impossible for us, but possible to the Lord. So I'm just going to read from Genesis 15 and starting from verse 5. Or let me just start from verse 1. So it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, to Abraham, sorry, in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceeding, exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me, saying, I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. Then Abraham said, Look, you've given me no offspring. Indeed, no one, no one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one small, this one shall not be your heir. But one will come from your own body. One that will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look, look now towards heaven and count the stars. Look now towards heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. If you're able to number them, so shall your descendants be. Then he said unto him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, 
Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these things to him and cut them into, into down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down the, car the, the carcass, Abraham drove them away. Now, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abraham, Now know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not your, theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years. And also the nation whom they serve will judge afterwards, I will judge afterwards, they will come out with great possessions. Now, as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age, but in the fourth generation they shall return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a, small, a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, for the river of Egypt to the river, uh, the great river, the Ephrates. So God is speaking to Abraham here, and he's telling him all these things, saying, Count the stars. And if you can count all the stars in the sky, that's how much I will give you. That's how many descendants I will give you. So the faith that Abraham would have possessed to actually believe these things that God is saying to him, because remember, he doesn't have a son. He doesn't have an heir of his own. And the Lord is saying, I will give you your own heir from your, your body, from your flesh. So this is something that Abraham has to believe. At this time, it was called Abraham. He has to believe these things without even knowing if it's going to happen. So it's that faith, having faith in the things that you do not see, having faith and hope in the stuff that is not yet come to pass. And he says, look, I will give you descendants. And then on top of that, God says, your descendants are going to be captured. It's like, why are you telling me all these things? I can't even see them, you know? And then it's like, you might not even be around because you're going to die. You know, you're going to die at a good age and you're going to die in peace with, with, um, with your forefathers. So the Lord is saying all these things to Abraham and he has to trust and believe it by faith. You know, he has to trust and believe these things that the Lord is saying to him by faith and say, okay, this is what God is saying. This is what he's promising me and take those promises according to what the Lord has said. So what has the Lord promised you? What has God spoken into your life that he's saying, I will do this for you and I will do this, uh, you know, I will do these things for you, your family, your children, your descendants, your workplace, your businesses. What has the Lord promised you that you think this is impossible or this is too big for me to even know that it's going to come to pass? So our, our father Abraham, he kept these words. He pondered these words to himself and through knowing this God that he's been communing with, he decided to keep those things in his heart and believe by faith that this is what the Lord is going to do for him and his descendants. So then we have um, uh, the other story that I wanted us to read. And this is from the book of Daniel. Um, let me go there. We're already here. Okay, I went, I was in the other book of Hebrews, which we'll read last. So the book of Daniel and it's 10, sorry, Daniel 3. I've got it here. Daniel 3, 16 to 30.
Okay, so I'm just going to read this. Um, I'll read it from 16 just so we can get the part of the story. So it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. So these were the three guys that refused to bow down to the king because they trusted in God. You know, they, they were Israelites that were captured and they were in this foreign land and the king had um, erected this thing that they had to, to bow down to, a statue, an idol, but they refused and they said, we will not bow down, okay? So at this point, the king is very, very upset. He said, why do these people not want to bow down? Let me just go back uh, to 13 so that we can... Okay, I'll read from 12. So it says, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of, ba of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commands to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is this true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet fleet, the harp, the sackbag, the summary, and the dilsma, all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. So he's saying to them, when the music plays, you're supposed to fall down and worship, right? Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So this is 16, our verse. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. They're saying this by faith. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Like, are you sure he's going to deliver you? How, how big is your faith? How big is your faith in this God that you serve? He said, they say, well, you know, he would deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hadst set up. So these boys say to the king, if you throw us into the fire, our God will come and save us. If he doesn't come, we will still not bow down to you. So it's like they have so much faith in the God that they serve, this God of Israel, that they decide it doesn't matter whether you throw us into the, the furnace, fury, fire, we're not going to bow down to you. Because of our faith in our God, we decide to not worship this golden image. We decide that we're different. We're going to, to, to die for this um, God that we serve. So in the next part, so then, you know, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, fury, and the form of his visage was changed against uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should, they should heat the furnace one, that furnace seven times more than it was because he was so upset of the answer, he said to them, go and hit that furnace seven times more, you know, uh, than it was, so that these men would not come out of it. Um, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding, exceeding hot, 
the flame of the fire slew those men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the fire was so hot that it actually burnt the people that were throwing these guys into it. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and he rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king, you, you cast three men in there. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Wow! The form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fairy furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither, then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singled, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire passed through them. This is because of the faith of these three Hebrew boys. They had so much faith that they said to themselves, O oh, king, you can throw us into the fire if you want. You can do whatever you want to do to us, but we will not bow before this graven image. We, we are not going to do that. We will serve our God, and we trust that he would will, he will deliver us. But then they said, even if he doesn't deliver us, we're still okay with that. And you know, brothers and sisters, it can be such a difficult task to believe and have faith in the Lord and say it doesn't matter whether he comes or he doesn't come I will still serve him I have that much faith that God will come in the last hour and deliver me you know in the New Testament the Bible says faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains if you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and the mountain will be moved. You can cast stones into the rivers if you have faith as small as a mustard seed. And we can see that these brothers' faith, it was more than, more than a mustard seed, exceedingly great faith that they were okay with being thrown into the fire. Abraham was okay. He said, I will believe God. I will believe him for nations that I cannot see because of the faith that he had for God, the faith that he was holding on to the word of God. What words have been spoken over your life, over your situation, over your marriage, over your job, over your business, over your, your, your ministry? What are the words that have been spoken that you've decided, I don't even want to believe them anymore because I don't have the faith for them? Resurrect that faith today. Resurrect your faith. Have faith. Have faith in God. Have faith in him to know that he will come through for you, that he will deliver you from the lion's den. He will deliver you from the fairy furnace. He will deliver you and bring you to the place that he said he will bring you to. Have faith in him. You know, when, when you sit at home, have, believe and trust that the thing that you have prayed for has already come to pass. Believe and trust and know that God has already accomplished the words that he said. Because the Bible says that he knows us from the end to the beginning. Like he knows our story. So we read stories from the beginning to the end. But God says, I know from the end to the beginning. So what you can see, he's already seen. Where you can go, he's already been. So if you want anything, you go to him because he can bring you to the place where your story has already ended. He can bring you to that specific 
place that you need to be at the particular time. Just like he said to Abraham, I will give you this, I will give you this, I will do this for your people. How did God know? Because he knows the end from the beginning. He knows all our stories. All we have to do is have faith in him. So for me to just really encourage you, I'm going to read from the book of Hebrews. And Hebrews 11 just talks about all these men in the Bible that had faith in God. These men that believed in the Lord. Let me see if I can read it from a different translation. Um, I like the message version because, you know, the message is very easy. <laughs> it's very easy to understand. And it's so, um, yeah, it's translated in, in our, our times. So, yeah, I'll read Hebrews 11. And it says the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors, set them above the crowd. By faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. By faith, by an act of faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice to God than Cain. It was what he believed, not what he brought, that made the difference. That's what, that's what God noticed and approved as righteous. After all these centuries, that belief continues to teach, to catch our notice. By an act of faith, Enoch skipped death completely. They looked over, they looked all over and couldn't find him because, he had, he, because God had taken him. We know on the basis of reliable testimony that before he was taken, he pleased God. It's impossible to please God apart from faith. It is impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see and acted on what he was told. The result, his family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world and the, right, the rightness of the believing world. As a result, Noah became intimate with God. By faith, Abraham said yes to God's call to travel to an unknown place that would become his home. When he left, he had no idea where he was going. By an act of faith, he lived in the country, promised him, lived as a stranger camping in tents. Isaac and Jacob did the same thing, living under the same promise Abraham did it by keeping his eyes on an unseen city, right? Unseen city with real eternal foundation, the city designed and built by God. God had this design, but Abraham didn't know. He only had faith. He could see it in his mind's eye. By faith, Baron Sarah was able to become pregnant, old woman as she was at the time, because she believed the one who made a promise. He made a promise and that he, would, he said he would do it. That's how it happened, that from one man's dead and shriveled loins, there are now people numbering into millions. Each of these people of faith died not yet having in hand what was promised. 
but still believing. How did they do it? They saw it away off in the distance, waved their greetings, and accepted the fact that they were being transient into this world. People who live this way make it plain that they're looking for their true home. If they were homesick for the old country, they could have gone back in time. But they were after a far better country than that heaven country. You can see why God is so proud of them and has a city waiting for them. By faith, Abraham, at the time of testing, offered Isaac back to God, acting in faith. He was ready to return the promised son, his only son, as he had been to receive him. And this, after he had already been told, your descendants shall come from Isaac. You, there's so many stories here. The Bible tells us in, in uh, Hebrews, by an act of faith, Isaac reached into the future as he blessed Jacob and Esau. By an act of faith, Jacob on his deathbed blessed each of Joseph's sons in turn, blessing them with God's blessing. By an act of faith, Moses' parents hid him away for three months after his birth. They saw the child's beauty and braved the king's decree. decree. There's so many stories that we can read. If you want to continue reading Hebrews 11, you know, uh, I'll just read up to 30 where it says, By faith the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days, and the walls fell flat. By an act of faith, Rahab, the, the Jericho harlot, welcomed the spies and escaped the destruction that came on those who refused to trust God. I could go on and on, but I have run out of time, which is so true. Like, I could go on, on and on about this. There's so many more. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, Samuel, the prophets, so many people. Through the acts of faith, the, tum the, tum the tumbled kingdoms made justice work, took the promises for themselves. They were protected from, from lions and fires and the sword and thrust, you know, turned disadvantages to advantages advantages, won battles, routed alien armies, women received their beloved ones back from the dead. There were those who, who were under torture, refused to give in and go free, preferring something better, resurrection. Others braved abuse and whips and, yes, chains and dungeons. We have stories of those who were stoned, sword in, in two, murdered in cold blood, stories of virus wandering in the earth, in animal skins, homeless, friendless, powerless. The world didn't deserve them, making their way as, the best, as best as they could on the cruel edge of the world. Not one of these people, even through their lives of faith, were exemplary. They got their hands on what God promised. God has a better plan. He has a better plan for us that their faith and our faith could come together to make one completed whole, their lives of faith not complete apart from us. So all these men that, you know, we read about in the Bible, they lived by faith. So my prayer for us today is that let us walk in this faith because their faith will not be complete without us. That's what Hebrews says. If we give up, then everything that Abraham has gone through, everything that David went through, everything that all these people went through would just, you know, disappear. So we need to have faith in this God, in Jehovah. We need to hold on to the promises of God. Hold on to what he has promised us. See in our mind's eye, see it and hold on to it. Even if we go, even if we go to the grave with it, but we can see it and somebody else will run with it. 
You know, the Bible says, write your vision down so that those who will see it can run with it. So if it doesn't happen in your lifetime, know that it will happen in the next generation. If the things that the Lord has promised you seem like they're not coming to pass, they might not come to pass in your lifetime, but they might do in your children's lifetime or their children's lifetime. All we have to do is hold on to the promises of God, write them down, write those promises down into a book so that when you're your other generations see them. They can say, wow, this is what the Lord has promised our family. This is what the Lord has promised our country. This is what the Lord has promised our city. Let us go and take that, those promises that the Lord has given to us. Thank you so much uh, for watching this broadcast today. I'm just so thrilled right now. Um, I, I feel like I can, I can do anything and believe because these story, stories that I've been reading here just also uplifted my own faith. You know, knowing that there's so many men and women of God that believed God, that held their faith together and did not give up on the promises of the Most High God. So today I pray that you will not give up on His promises, that you will have faith that God would do what He says He would do. Remember, remember that faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains, can move your mountains and my mountains. Again, don't forget, if you have any questions, any prayer requests that you would like us to uh, pray upon, you can email them. Um, into our mission channel email address and also subscribe to the channel because it does support us a lot and you know you can share this video with your friends and family um, we would love to hear from you as well and if you have any other topics that you'd like us to discuss here on the mission channel please do let us know if you have an interview that you want to share with us uh, we want to hear from you if the Lord has done a miracle in your life that you want us to share, please send in your letters or come live and we can do an interview so that we can hear what the Lord has done in your life. Remember the Bible says that they overcame the enemy by the words of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb by the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. So we would love to hear from you. We would love to hear your testimonies and the miracles that God has been doing in your life. This is Expect a Miracle and I will see you soon.